What's up, everybody? Sorry we're a few minutes late. Um, it's your girl, No Mercy, here. It's Tuesday night, so you already know what time it is. It's time for No Punches Pulled with No Mercy. Uh, some of you may already know who I am. Some of you that don't, um, I am your host, Brooke Millbrook. Now, um, you may know me formally as my fake fight name, Brooke No Mercy Deardorff. I am a retired professional boxer. Uh, I held the WBC International Lightweight title until I retired. Um, fought all the top, best of the best out there and just got inducted into the International Women's Boxing Hall of Fame last year. So that's the highlight of it all for me. Um, I've definitely been through some good, bad and BS in this sport of boxing. Uh, this is my platform, welcome. Um, so on here, we're going to talk to pioneers, past, present, future uh, boxers, and it's going to be, we're going to talk the talk and walk the walk, and we're going to get to the truth. Um, so as you saw, the name of today's show uh, was one-on-one -on -one with Sonia Drilling, The Truth Shall Set You Free. Um, unfortunately, Sonia is the reason we are late here today because she decided to uh, respond to my text after speaking this morning saying she was ready to go when she didn't come on on time and said she wasn't coming on the show. Uh, she sent me a really nice email. So since I was going to have Sonia on here to talk about her career, give her some publicity since she had recently just fought six-time world champion Chevelle Fista Steel Hallback, it was a big controversy decision. Everybody knows that. I made that very clear right after the fight when I posted on all my platforms that I thought it was a robbery and it was bullshit. If you guys watched the fight, I'm sure you thought that that's the same thing. But I was going to have Sonia on to give her side of the story and tell us how she felt about the decision. But since she wanted to be a coward and back out, I had a surprise guest we were going to bring on. So we'll just bring her on now and then I'll read the email and we'll just... Talk with, bring her on in, Chevelle Fista Steel Hallback. What's up, Chevy? What's going on? What's going on? <laughs> Girl, so your uh, your opponent got a little scared, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm kind of blown about it. Like, I'm speechless about it. Like, I really don't know. I don't know. I don't know either because we talked all week. We had it all set up. I talked to her this morning. We're sitting here waiting for her to come on the show. I send her a text and call her and she replies. She sent me an email um, at, I don't even, 7.33. So she was already late for the show. So let's just read the email and then you can tell me what you think about the email. All What's right, up, Women's you. Boxing Channel? Thank you for tuning in. Um, our special guest, Sonia Drelling chickened out so she's not joining us today i was gonna be nice but now i'm gonna not you're gonna get the no mercy side of me today because now she's got me really upset so oh, email sonia since you want to send it out and not join us i'm sure you're watching us live right now so i'm just going to share with everybody why you chickened out <laughs> Unfortunately, after being advised of a few statements made and posted about your views on my last fight, I will not be attending your show. I will not engage in trash talking. I'm sorry you feel that way about the decision. We fought. We fought in a neutral state. Zero bias. I was definitely the underdog. Don't let your emotions become you. Don't be a Karen of the boxing world. So I'm a Karen now, you know. This is a very wise saying that can be applied to a lot of situations in life. Mind your own business. Bitch, she's lucky I'm not fighting anymore. Because I wouldn't have took it easy on your ass like Chevy did. I'm not nice. Uh, ask yourself if this affected you or your family personally or financially. With that being said, I will not be manipulated or used to promote your ambitions or goals on your show. You did not support me, so I have no time to support you. It was just a boxing match. Well, it ain't just a boxing match. I don't think Chevy thought it was just a damn boxing match. But okay, we're going to keep reading. 
because she's got me so pissed off right now. Let me find out where I was at. Um, uh, it was a charity event for positive things. Win or lose, I was there to empower women and young fighters and to raise money for starving children and the community. I wish you would have took the time to come on the show and tell us that shit. <laughs> the main reason I took the fight was because it was for a charity. Trust me, the pay wasn't there. Well, the shit wasn't there for me either. So I don't use that as an excuse. To discredit my accomplishments or tarnish what I stand for and respect is pure jealousy and envy. So now I'm jealous of her. The only person she fucking fought was Chevelle. Ain't fought nobody else. So I don't want to hear that shit. If Chevelle has a problem with me personally, then she can reach out to me. Thank you for your offer, but no thanks. So, Sonia. I was going to be nice, but I'm not now. So now the world knows why you chickened your ass out because you didn't want to come on here and defend yourself because the whole fucking world knows that it was bullshit. You could smell the bullshit from the time they got the damn scorecards put in their hand. And on top of that, your ass knew you lost because you could see it all over your face. You couldn't even talk. But you didn't want to come on here and give us your side of the story. So everybody now knows that you know for a fact you lost the shit. Chevy, what do you think about the email? Man, I'm I'm sorry that this has happened. Um, you know, I think at all times, no matter whatever the situation may be, we should try to stay professional at all times. And if she had already agreed to come onto the show to speak with you, I mean, you know, why not follow through with that? I don't I don't understand by having her on the show telling her side of it or just telling her telling the people about herself period how how is how is you how is you using her by right. doing that you know exactly. I, I don't get that part um if she feels some kind of way because you know you're talking about your opinion that you feel that the fight you know was should have went my way and that it was, you know, a robbery. That's your opinion, and everybody's entitled to their opinion. Exactly. You're in a position now where you're on a platform that you talk about things like this, you know? Um, some people are going to agree with you, and some people are going to disagree with you. But that's what you do now. This is the platform, you know? And we should be able to come together and ag right. agree to disagree. We should be able to come together and give our opinions and how we feel about whatever situation may be. Um, without feeling that a person is trying to do whatever, manipulate or trying to do whatever up under their sleeve. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I hate that she feels that way. Um, because Brooke, you're a very good friend of mine. I've not known you for years. You yeah. Know, and I, you're not that type of person at all. No, it wasn't even gonna be that way. Right. Like literally, I had a whole list of questions to ask her about her career, how you got into boxing, like what made you go to boxing? Did you know what was your best fight? Like, who was your inspirations? Like, what's your goals? Like, what's the future? Like, there the whole show was literally going to be about her. I was going to bring you in and talk about the fight for like the last 10 minutes of the show. So right. it the whole show was to get it was that would have been huge publicity for her. If anybody knows who I am, I don't. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I am no mercy. I will talk shit. And I will give my opinion, but the whole world gives their opinion. I was not the only person that thought it was a controversial decision. So you would think, since it was called out by a ton of people, she would have wanted to come on and give her side of the story or how she felt about it. So it would have been huge publicity for her right. coming on my show, talking about it, being about it. And it's not just a fight, Sonia. I'm sorry, but if you're a real fighter, every fight means something. It's not, oh, it was just a loss. No. Like that shit hurts if you're a true fighter. Whether you won it or you didn't really win it and you got the win or you got whatever. It's This is our lives. Like this was everything for us. Maybe not for you, but I know for Chevelle, her whole life is boxing. So I'm pretty sure that that bullshit decision of affected her emotionally so 
you're nothing but a coward. I'm sorry. I was going to be nice, but I'm not nice now. Chevelle will hold back. You pissed me off. So you are nothing but a coward. <laughs> I'm sorry. But if you got any balls in there, you need to give Chevelle a rematch. And FYI, I hope the damn commission overturns the decision and you get the damn loss that you deserve. I'm so pissed that she didn't come on right now. It's not even funny. <laughs> Don't, don't let it bother oh. you. Know, when it's the record straight, you know, I don't know if Tony you watching or not, but personally, I have nothing against her. I actually think that she's an um, awesome person, a wonderful person. Um, you know, what happened in that ring, or shall I say what happened after we fought in that ring, you know, it didn't have any, you know, she didn't have anything to do with that. You know, she no. came, you know, she came to do a she job. She didn't do the scorecards. You know, and, and um, you know, she fought a good fight to her caliber you know what i'm saying um you know and like i told her after the fight you know she came it to me you know and she really gave me a lot of praise just for being the person that i am um she thanked me for giving her the opportunity you know to get in the ring with me you know we talked for, for a minute and i told yeah. her you know, each and every fight i take serious um and that sometimes you know, even though going into the fight, she was an underdog. And I actually like being an underdog when I fight, you know, because when you're the underdog, people are already expecting you to lose. People are not expecting, you know, for you to come out the top. And so uh -huh. when you are the underdog and that happens, you surprise everybody. So I, I don't quite like not being the underdog or whatever the case may be. And then some people would take, you know, the person that's the underdog, they'll take the lightning. You know, or whatever the case may be, and I don't take any fight lightly. And like I was telling her, you know, even though I feel within my soul, a soul that I won that fight, you know, at the end of the day, the fight was given to her. So I told her, I said, hold on to it, you know, ravish it because you know people might be coming for you. You know, this might have set up an opportunity for you to, to really get some good payday, or whatever the case may be. Um, I know she didn't get paid well for this fight. I mean, not to fight for one of my caliber. And I say that because, you know, I was the one that paid her purse. Um, you know, I hadn't fought, I think in a year. And before that particular fight, I was in the rankings. And I was ranked pretty high with all the sanctioned bodies. And plus, um, Box Rack had me one, and then it started dropping. You know, WBC had me ranked number one. After my fight before her, so after not fighting for a year, Box Rec kicked me out of the rankings. I still was in the ranking with the other sanctioned bodies, but Box Rec was in the rankings. And in order to get back into the rankings, I had to get a fight, you know. And I reached out to um, there was numerous fighters that I reached out to to try to get a fight. Um, this particular promoter that was in South Dakota, he reached out and said, "Hey." You got a car coming up, would you like to be on the car? Of course I would. But stipulations were I had to pay for it. I had to pay for my phone. I think my phone coming in, you know, we um we were more food, you know, plus, you know, my team and everything. So it was a pretty penny that I had to pay. Or whatever yeah. the case would be to 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 get there and be wrong. Um if you beat me, you beat me. You know what I'm saying? But don't take it away from me. Don't, right. don't don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know what I'm saying? I had to, you know, issue a, a, a real pretty penny for that for our fight alone. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, like I said, if you're gonna beat me, that's cool. I have no problem with that if, if you beat me. Right. Okay? But don't but don't don't rob me in such a way, you know what I'm saying, that you just I feel like rape. You know, right. I, say, I say that because you know, round round three alone, she did not touch me one time. No. Okay. Round three, she didn't touch me. Round five, she didn't touch me not one time. Now, could I have been more active? Of course I could have. Could I have done more? Of course I could. You understand? But at the same time, how can you give a person a round that didn't even touch you? You know, and then it was one round where I touched her ten unanswered. 10 unanswered times 
and they gave her that round. One judge gave her every round. Every round. I mean, it was like, aside from the one for you, the other two were like completely her. I think the other one was like 50, 59, 50, 58, 56, or 50. It was like flopped. Yeah, one judge gave her all rounds. Yeah. Another judge gave her every round except one. Yes. And then then the other judge gave me four rounds to her. Yeah, which was accurate. That was the only accurate scorecard. Because, okay, so for everybody that's joining us today, Chevelle was going to be my special 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 guest so she was going to come in towards the end of my show with sonia and we were just going to discuss possibility of a rematch um chevelle is um petitioning to get it overturned with the commission we were going to discuss that i don't know if she knew that um but she is working on getting it overturned um she is fighting it um we were going to talk about that but chevelle is going to be here for a brief moment i'm going to have chevelle on again because i wasn't prepared to do a full chevelle show because chevelle and i have been very very close god since like 2008 seven or something like that when we met at an all-female card in california was the first time we met and i i can understand where she came from with that because Chevelle could probably tell you, but the first time I met Chevelle, like I looked up to Chevelle, like she was like my, like, that was who I looked up to in women's boxing. So even though I don't have the same fight style, I just loved everything about Chevelle. But so when I first met her, I couldn't even really talk. I was just like, Hey, what's up? I was like all giddy, like a little kid meeting a superstar. (laughs) And we were fighting on the same freaking card. Um, she was fighting Terry Blair on that card. Right. Um, so I've known Chevelle for a very long time. We're very close. She's I consider her family. Um, but I was not biased. So everybody understands when I was scoring the fight, I called Chevelle immediately afterwards. And I said, what the fuck happened? Because I gave round one, everybody, I don't know if everybody's seen it. It's on YouTube now. If you have not seen the fight, go watch the fight. But round one could have went either way. It was literally a feeling out round. It was 100% even, if you ask me. It was a feeling out round. Round two, Sonia did take it to her a little bit. Chevy was getting the ring rust off. Okay. So, Sonia two. Three through six, literally, she might have touched her six times in the whole rest of the fight because Chevy was doing Chevy's shuffle. <laughs> what I call it the Chevy shuffle and the no look so Yari knew she was comfortable because she only does that when she's comfortable so the girl wasn't touching her she was throwing punches now don't get me wrong she was punching but she was Chevy was bubbing and weaving and countering should she have thrown more counter punches I told her yes she should have been more active and she wasn't tired she could have been more active but I was very honest and I'm not biased I spoke to many people after they watched the fight and they all scored it the same as me. So I'm not being biased because Chevy's family to me. <laughs> With that said, it is what it is. Um, let's see. We got, um, what's up, Mike? So let's see. We got women's boxing channel in here. Brooke, don't hold back. I 100% will not be holding back since she just told me I was jealous and to mind my own business. That makes me tempted to come out of retirement so I can fight her. Because I will whoop her ass. I won't take it easy. Chevy didn't want to hurt the girl. I'm not that way. Uh, Chevy called out Jonas, 9th of 2022. Jonas' reply was, see next post. (laughs) He says, see next post. Mike says, hey, Michael Orr. What's up, Uh, Mike? She has nothing I want, so she is irrelevant to where I'm trying to go and what I'm trying to achieve. I can't see myself boxing at 50. I know I'm on limited time. She offers me nothing. Continue next post. If I ever feel the need to fight a legend, it would be Brakus. Chevy then replied, but you will fight a 2-11 and 11 fighter. Why? Oh, because you needed money. Oh, okay, LOL. Is this what you, you guys going back and forth on Twitter? I didn't right. see that. But you never ran from anyone except the one, me, LOL. You are the one. 
Uh, I wouldn't want to fight you either, but uh, Chevy then said, but you will fight. Oh, I already read that. It posted it twice. So Jonas, you want to fight Jonas? Jonas clearly is not going to fight you. That's just a Twitter war. Nobody will fight Chevy. Let's not even put that out on just Jonas. Nobody will fight her. Nobody wants to fight Chevy. Even at 50, you're still a threat, Chevy. Jesus, Lord. Yeah. yeah. And I guess they, you're 51 now, aren't you? I mean, I'm 51. I guess they're probably saying she can't, she can't look that good and be 51. <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> Girl, you don't look a day over like 35. Well, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So, yeah. Um... I don't even know what to say about the Sonya thing. Um, we're just, I guess, going to just move on. We're going to just talk about, I don't know, whatever everybody wants to talk about. Because she threw me off because I literally had like a three out. Girl, Sonya, look. You see all my little freaking notes? These are all questions I was going to ask your freaking ass before Chevelle even came on the freaking show. So it was literally going to be all about you. And then I was just going to ask you what you thought about the decision. But now I don't like you. It's personal. Because that is a that is a bitch move to say you're gonna go on something like Chevelle said. She didn't say those words, so that's not in quotation. But if you say you're gonna do something, it's totally unprofessional to back out. I even talked to you this morning and you said you were good to go. Just to make sure I didn't need to rearrange something. I talked to you this morning. Um but that's a total bitch move to not even tell. You weren't even going to actually, if I wouldn't have called or texted your ass, you wouldn't even have told me you weren't coming. That's a bitch move. I hope you, I, <laughs> let's just, I'm going to leave it at that. That's a bitch move. Cause if I say what I really feel, the show will probably get flagged. So I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, what do we got over here? Mike, Chevy, you plan out, plan out. Oh, so, okay. Um, we got to go back. Dusty Motford says, great information. Thank you, Dusty. Um, Sonia was supposed to be here with us today. She is a coward. Uh, women's Boxing Channel. I supported Chevy on that and Jonas trolled me bad for it, LOL. So he was sticking <laughs> up for you, apparently. And Jonas was talking trash. Uh, Michael Orr says, you plain out got robbed on the Sonya fight. Was hoping Drelling would have showed up. Yeah, me too, Mike. She <laughs> literally, I talked to her this morning, Mike, and she said she was good to go. Everything was good. I sent her the damn link. I sent her a message, said, hey, make sure you got the link. Good to go. 7.30 rolls around, 7.35 rolls around. She's still not in here. So I text her, no response. I call, I get voicemail. Then she texts me, I sent you an email. Sorry, I'm not coming. Were you in here, Mike, when, she, when I read the email that she sent me? Were you in here? I need to know. Because if not, we might need to go back over a few of the uh, sentences. She had me so pissed off when I was talking to Eric in the background. You know how when somebody says something and you immediately go from like, calm and collective to like 5,000 pissed off and your face is red and you're like, you want to hurt somebody oh, man. and you start shaking. That's how pissed I was when I was reading her email. I had to wait five minutes before I could get on. Cause otherwise y'all would have seen me like ready to fight somebody. No, you weren't on when I, okay, Mike, for you, I don't know if women's boxing, if you were here or not or, or dusty, but I will read it one more time for y'all so that you know what she said to me. <laughs> I'm so like, whew. She's got me hot. Yes, I know that feeling very well. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> she says, at 7.33 is when I got the email. Actually, that's when she sent it. I didn't get it then because it was after that when I called her. Unfortunately, after being advised of a few statements made and posted about your views on my last fight, I will not be attending your show. First of all, I don't even see why that matters, like what I thought of the fight. Because everybody has an opinion. Everybody feels a type of way. 
on any fight for that matter if you're a fight fan whether you thought somebody got screwed or not you could smell the bullshit okay let me okay let me finish reading this and then i'll go into why you could smell the bullshit before it even happened if anybody didn't see the fight uh i'm sorry you feel that way about the decision we fought we fought in a neutral state zero bias i was definitely the underdog well that's because you're five and three and you fought chevelle obviously you're the freaking underdog Jesus Lord. I bet you weren't the underdog in your other fucking seven fights when you didn't fight anybody. <clears throat> Don't let your emotions become you. Well, they're definitely me now because you made it personal. Then she called me a Karen. Don't be a Karen of the boxing world. Don't be a pussy and not show up when you say you're coming. How about that one? She's got me so mad, Chevy. <laughs> <laughs> There is a very wise saying that can be applied to a lot of situations in life. Mind your own business. Well, I'm um, sorry if you're not new to boxing. Pretty much everybody gives you their opinion and puts their business in your business. So maybe you're just too new and you haven't felt that yet. But I know a whole lot of people that didn't even fight or never even been in the ring put their dang words in my business when I was fighting. I'm sure Chevy's had a whole lot of people stick their foot in her business that didn't know shit. So... Don't tell me to mind my business. That wasn't a good look. Ask yourself if this affected you or your family personally or financially. No, it did not. But it sure the hell affected the damn boxing world because Chevelle got robbed. Didn't affect me personally. Actually, it did affect me personally because I was disappointed in boxing once again with the fucking robbery because they happen all the time. So, yeah, it did affect me personally. I was upset because... Uh, a fighter that deserved the win got robbed. I've been there many times. So yeah, I was affected personally, as a matter of fact. Not financially, but emotionally. With that being said, I will not be manipulated. First of all, how can I manipulate you? I don't know how, the, how having someone on my show to give them, you know, some airtime. And for people to, people know me, Sonia, don't nobody know you. They only know your name now because you fought Chevelle. So I was just giving you some more publicity. People know who I am. <clears throat> you do not support me, so I have no time to support you. Well, that's just fine. I can support myself. It's It was just a boxing match, which absolutely was not. I don't think you should fight anymore because if that's how you feel, you're not a fighter. It was a charity event for positive things. Win or lose, I was there to empower women and young fighters, which you did not do because you didn't even show up. So now you just disappointed all those kids who thought you were going to be on the show and you were a ghost. You ghosted me. You didn't show up. So, No. You didn't empower anybody. You just told them that it's okay to be a quitter and not stand up for yourself. So no, you didn't. Win or lose, I was there to, oh, I already read that. The main reason I took the fight was because it was for charity. Great for you. We've all been there. Trust me, the pay wasn't there. Yep, been there too. Uh, to discredit my accomplishments or tarnish what I stand for and represent is pure jealousy and envy. I don't know how I can be jealous of somebody who wasn't even known before they fought Chevelle. I don't know how that's possible. How can I be jealous of her? I don't, I'm so lost right now, Sonia. You freaking threw me for a loop. Because how can I be jealous of you when literally I had never heard of you before you fought Chevelle? Not sure how that works, but okay. If that makes you sleep at night. If Chevelle has a problem with me personally, then she can reach out. She doesn't have a problem with you personally. We have, and I don't have a problem with you personally. Now I do because you told me you were coming to the show. I didn't have a backup show planned. And I talked to you literally this morning and you said you were good to go. And then literally when you're five minutes late, I call and text you and you send me a freaking email saying you're not coming. You could have told me that shit this morning. So I could have planned and had a backup plan for the show. It is totally bad business to tell somebody you're going to come on and do an interview 
regardless of what you think I haven't done interviews that I didn't want to do before. They asked me questions I didn't want to be friggin' asked before or made me feel uncomfortable. I'm sure Chevelle has been asked questions that made her feel uncomfortable, but she freaking showed up and answered them because she said she was coming. Total bullshit and total, that is like, shit is what that is. That's what she had to say, Mike. So let me know what you think about that. Uh, we got to go back down, Chevy, and read some of these comments. Okay. <laughs> I just figured out how to read a comment. I'm like, how do you do? Okay, I got it. Now. You can see the comments, right? Yeah, I can see them. Now. Okay, so, okay, we got to see. I read that. Um, you put my glasses on. I said to Jonas, uh, are we going to, okay. So are we going to see you soon? I know it's tough to get fights in USA and that pisses me off. Um, Chevy is supposed to fight. I know in March, right? Are you supposed to um, fight in March? March, March. That's, that's what yeah. they're talking about right now. And in, in New Mexico. No. Is that the one for that tournament thing that um, Laura Ramsey's doing? Yeah, that's they're, they're working on that now. Okay, that's for March, or do you have something else in March? No, I don't. That that's the only thing. That's the only thing right now. Okay. Um, he said, "I said to Jonas, never said you didn't have a belt. Did Obanoff have a belt when Jonas gave her a shot for the WBA international title?" I said, "No." You call at Chevelle Hallback irrelevant, yet you got your international belt from uh, you downer and defended it on all your six underwinds and you chucked Tao in. Just defending Chevelle on facts, which if any, okay, so I've learned already just from watching the Sugar Show um, in my last shows that women's boxing channel definitely speaks facts. He doesn't speak without having facts. So he likes to check people sometimes, but that's good because sometimes we have our facts wrong. He definitely knows his facts. Uh, Mike says, wow, sounds like you should jump in the ring with her, Brooke. You know what? I would fight that bitch tomorrow. No training. Oh my God. Because that's how upset she has me. She wouldn't go more than a round. Um, then she, women's boxing channel says, then Chevy said this to me, which meant everything to me. LOL. Love it. Facts. Thank you for your support. Everybody loves your support. Women's boxing channel. Michael Orr says, that's the only time I heard about her facts. Thank you, Mike. Me too. Cause, uh, I had never heard her name until I asked Chevy, who are you fighting? She says, Sonia drilling or dryling. I don't even know which way you say it, but I said, who, who is that? She knew she must be O and O because I've never heard of her. So Sonia, you need to be thanking your, uh, P's and Q's over there. But, uh, I, uh, I really, really hope the commission overturns this fight because you don't deserve shit right now. You can't even keep your word. Your word is shit. Um, is over here dying. Chevelle, you know me. I mean, I tell it like it is. You want to tell it like it is, but you, you, you hold back because I know you can be that way. I can. I, I've seen it. I've seen it. <laughs> you can be that way. And I try really hard not to disrespect people unless they disrespect me. But she totally disrespected me. Like that was so shitty. Like she could have told me this morning, Hey, I've changed my mind. I don't want to do the show anymore. That would at least gave me half a day to come up with something else. That is true. You're going to wait until after I call you. Cause the show's already friggin' started and tell me I changed my mind because you didn't think I won the fight. Bitch. Nobody thought you won the fight. You fucking lost. <laughs> Jesus. You know it. Stop trying to pretend like you didn't. You got handed a gift early. Merry Christmas early because your ass didn't win the fight. So they gifted you. 
<clears throat> I had, uh, okay, before I read the rest of these comments. So here is the thing with how everybody knew that the, that there was bullshit coming before the bullshit actually came out. I don't know if you guys bought the fight and watched the fight or if since have watched it on, I know Chevelle posted it on YouTube. If you have went and watched it since then, go fight, watch it on YouTube if you have not seen it. But anybody who is a true boxing fan, a boxer or has boxed or whatever knows boxing already knew there was going to be bullshit because as soon as the bell rang at the end of the sixth round, fighters go back to their corners, okay? We're taking off the gloves. It literally took almost five minutes before they read the decision. In that five minute time period, which is asinine for it to take that long to read a decision. Like you're literally ready to go to sleep because the shit's been done. It's over. But while we're waiting for all of this, <laughs> the, the ring announcer, the comp guy that's, you know, what, ring announcer? I'm so flustered. I'm like, can't even think of what he's called. Ring announcer gets the judges scorecards, right? He's over in the corner getting everybody's scorecards. He's looking at the scorecards. He's flipping through them. He looks back at the freaking judges and he literally just stares at the cards. Then he walks over to the dirty ass promoter <laughs> and is whispering to the promoter and pointing at the cards. Now they're whispering back and forth looking at the scorecards. Then they stand there and talk for a minute. Then he goes back to the freaking corner and talks to the judges. And he's like, hey, probably like, are you sure this shit is right? Because you want me to read this out loud? It's probably what he was saying over in the corner. So then he stands there and talks to them for a few minutes, then comes back, talks to the damn promoter again. It literally, if you go watch the fight, it was like, four and a half minutes or something, almost five minutes before he read the decision. They gave Chevelle one round, four to two. And they gave Sonia all six rounds on one core scorecard and five of the six rounds on another scorecard. Was rec so here's the funny thing, Chevy, when I was watching the fight live, uh -huh. I was, getting, so I was recording the fight. Like I, I, didn't record the whole thing, but like I was recording like the last, I don't know, round or two, just because I was going to send it to you. But I was so mad when they read the decision, I fucking deleted it through my phone. Because I was like, I'm not sending her this bull. She don't want this. No. What are you going to do with this? But as soon as they started doing that, you could already smell bullshit coming. Like you already knew something totally effed up was going to happen because it took so long and they literally were whispering about the scorecards. He kept going back and forth from the promoter to the judges because he knew it was wrong. Then to top it all off, after they read the decision, the commentators come on and talk for like five minutes about how big of a robbery it was. They made a bad decision so they said Sonia was a nice girl, like she comes to fight, like she gave it her all, but she did not win that fight. And they went on and on about how Chevelle got robbed. So, Sonia, I'm not the only one who felt that way. Clearly, both of the commentators felt that way and the ring announcer. So, I mean, it was put on W Band if you follow W Band like everybody else. I mean, they shared my post immediately after I posted it was a robbery. They shared it on W band. So you knew way before today at 8 30 Eastern standard time, when you were supposed to air live on my show that I felt you lost the fight. It was not a surprise. I posted it everywhere that there was a robbery in boxing, but I still was going to make the show all about you. Literally. I'm not that type of person until you cross me wrong, which is what happened today. <laughs> so I hope everybody's enjoying <laughs> being flustered and upset today on my, and then to top it all off, this was my first show by myself. This was my, this was my first kick it off by myself show without Michael on with me. You're doing a great job. 
Thanks. I know you're laughing at me, but you agree with me. You're not going to say it because you don't want to be, you don't want that. I know you agree with what I'm saying. It was shit that she didn't come on the show. She already said it's, that's totally unprofessional. Like you book something, you say you're going to be there. You should be there. Like that's crap. Uh, All right. Let's see what else we got over here. Um, I think I read that. Yeah. Uh, Sonia's dried up. She was dried up before. She hadn't even fought anybody. Uh, women's boxing channel. So Sonia's dried up. Eddie Barrington, thanks for joining us. He said, ha ha, dried up. She hadn't even fought anybody before Chevelle. She was literally an unknown. And she will be unknown after Chevelle because I don't. I mean, what? Who is she going to, she can't be any top fighter. Sorry, Sonia, but you can't. So you might as well just stay back there with the people that don't have experience that you've been fighting before Chevelle, because if you fight anybody that's even remotely up in the rankings, you're going to get your ass whooped because they're not going to take it easy on you. Chevy took it easy on you because she didn't want to hurt you because you were a baby. That's what she does. And I can tell you that for a fact because she's done it before. Haven't you, Chevy? I have. You hold that, don't you? I have. And I, and, you know, and I said numerous times after the one particular fight, I'm like, you know what? I'm never going to hold back again. I'm never going to hold back again. I thought I, I thought I learned my lesson. But apparently I did. <laughs> you got to stop that. Oh, trust you gotta me. got to stop that. Trust me. Trust me. You're, You're done now, right? No more holding back. No more. Give an opportunity to get back in that ring. No you're gonna go balls to the wall. You're gonna go all out. Are we gonna no. see the we gonna see the 20, 25 year old Chevy? Okay. Okay. That's what I wanna see. You can still do the slipping and the bobbing and the weaving and the countering, but you came back with like four or five counter punches, not I just did. one or two. I did. I and did. then when when you hit him with a good one, you jumped on their ass and you got him out of there. You are absolutely right. And you are not winded at all in that fight. Like, you are not even breathing heavy at all in between no. rounds. So, you could easily do that. Now that you got the ring rust off, when you get your butt back in there, I want to see the 25 year old Chevy with them five, six punch combinations. And when you hurt them, knock them out of there. Get them out of there. We not even let it go to the damn judges. You already know it's against us, anyways. When you get older, they want. They ready for someone else to come take over. Most definitely. Most definitely. But yes, you have, um, I was extremely disappointed. And when Melissa Hernandez, I love you. Love you, girl. But I was really, that fight threw me because you pulled back so bad in that fight. <laughs> I was very disappointed in that one. That one hurt me, like, to my, to my soul when I watched that one. Because I was like, What? And don't get me wrong, I love Melissa Hernandez to death. Like, we cool. Love her to death. Both great, great fighters. But Chevy uh, had her hurt and didn't want to hurt her because they were friends. So she pulled back like 95% pulled back on that fight. Because <clears throat> she could have stopped her. No, only, only, only in the first, only in the first four rounds. After the fourth round, you know what I'm saying? They became a very entertaining fight, you know. And she got into her groove, you know, and we started doing. I think we very got we got similar style. You do got similar style styles, but you're way more powerful. Yeah, I, I have. I will agree, and I think she would agree on that as well. That I got a little more power than she had. Um, and like I said, the first four rounds, you know. But after, after was it which round was it, was it when you was it the second round that you hurt her? Um, I want to say it was either the second or the third. Second or the third round, but I mean you had her hurt and the bell rang. Otherwise, she'd have been done. But then after that is when you you pulled back, and even the rest of the fight, it was very it was an entertaining fight because y'all went yeah. back and forth. Yeah, but yeah, you bro. let it go that way. You let it go that way. Don't play with me. I know you. 
<laughs> Melissa knows. She knows. She knows. You didn't want to hurt her. But it was, was a good fight. Good. It was a very entertaining fight. And I love mm -hmm. Melissa to death. But we had fun at fighting. We had fun doing the fight. We had fun out of the fight too. We oh, I bet. Yeah, she, she is. She's she's crazy. She's crazy. She's my kind of girl. She's definitely my kind of girl. But uh, yeah, no, yeah. So we'll just leave it with that. So let's see. Mike says WBC dried up. I'm dying. Well, there. She wasn't ever. What's what's the metaphor I can use? She's not dried up because she never was wrung out. Like she never had, she, she never started. So how do you dry out when you hadn't even started yet? Who is judging the fight? The three blind mice? Mike, I could tell you the judges. Let's see. Who are the judges? Um, Mike Contreras. John Clemiato and Jeff Sinnott. I don't know any of them. I've never heard of any of them anyway. But it was a small venue in wherever it was. Saux Falls or something. Sioux Falls. Sioux Falls. Um, Women's Boxing Channel says, bet you a million pounds... Sonia's watching this. I can 100% guarantee you that Sonia is watching this. Sonia, if you're watching this, I just texted you and called you from my personal cell. You also have my email. Feel free to respond. I will, I will happily share whatever else you have to say to my viewers. I mean, the show was going to be all about you and your boxing career. And literally the last 10 minutes was going to be Talking about the controversial decision. I mean, you are gonna get some serious spotlight here. <laughs> Not now. I don't I don't know what to say. Um, guaranteed. Yeah, I know she's watching. Send me a text, send me an email since you're you're good at emailing. Send me an email. I'll share your thoughts with the viewers. They wanna know. Inquiring minds want to know why you chickened out and didn't show up. Uh, she lost her last three before Chevy. Yeah. Let's look. I had her pulled up. Um, she fought a Kara Wiggins in her pro debut 1-0, and a Jordan Garcia from Albuquerque, uh, won four and oh, second fight, third fight, oh, four and one, Kayla Williams, uh, fourth fight, Latasha Burton, four and 13. Well, I mean, you should have won those. Uh, then, okay, here's where it gets interesting. Exactly, I didn't even really look into this before I went on. Um, her record, because I wasn't really going to go over all that. I was going to let her go over all of that. But here's my point, um, loud and clear, exactly what I said. If you step up in the ranks and start fighting anybody with experience, you're going to get your ass handed to you. And here's exactly why. She won her first four. I just told you their records, which records are deceiving in women's boxing. So don't get me wrong. But she jumped up to a girl that was 8-0, lost. Next fight, girl was 10 and 0, lost. Next fight, she fought a debuter, lost. Next fight was Chevelle. Bitch, you lost. <laughs> and it's going to be overturned. I, I really, really hope that the commission comes through on this one and overturns it. Um, let's see. She lost her Hollier, Miller, and Jones. Yeah, I know. I know their names. Yeah, oh, well, yeah, I, I see that now, Mike, but I went and looked because I already had her box rec pulled up for the show. Uh, Women's Boxing Channel says, Chev been in with Riker, Holly Holmes, Brakus. I could name her whole dang record. I don't even have to look. Uh, Holly Holmes, Brakus, Hernandez, Miriam Lamar, Layla McCarter. There's more. Um, there's more. 
Um, uh, so speaking of robberies, I've been robbed. Chevelle's been robbed many times. Do you wanna do you wanna tell us which fights um that he's talking about here that were that you were robbed in or you feel you were robbed in your opinion? Um uh, Riker, 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 you can't even count that. Chevelle, that was like your second fight, or wasn't it? No, Riker, Riker was like my second fight. Yeah, um, she was like your second fight. So that yeah, uh, Riker beat me. Yeah. Holly Holmes, Holly Holmes beat me the first time. Yeah, um, not in the rematch. Yeah. Um Rakers did not beat me. No. Nope. Um, Miriam Lamar did not. No. Nope. Yeah. I agree. So those, 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 those are the only ones that's on there. Me and Hernandez Lamar, didn't really beat me. Nah, it, um, she didn't she didn't win that fight. It was it was a draw. Oh, it was a draw. Yes, it was. It was a draw. Um McCarter, you you won you fought her more than once, but you won all you won yeah. both fights, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's my good team. That's that's Layla's my good You two could fight again. I know Layla, she would. Hey, listen, we've already talked about it, but because we're we we are we're such good friends. I know. We're it's hard to fight friends. somebody you know. That's exactly yeah. why um me and Melissa Hernandez were supposed to fight a couple times. We had contracts. Um, but we had become friends. Like we talked often. I haven't talked to her in a long time, but we talked often. Um, and she was just like, I really don't want to fight. I mean, I don't know. I would have fought her because it was just, it was the right fight at the right time for like both of our careers. Um, so I had, we, I would have took the fight, but she ended up not, we ended up not fighting. We just, I don't know. She just thought we were too close and it's hard to fight somebody you become friends with. Like I could never fight Chevelle. I mean, we sparred, but that's as far as I could go with it. I could never fight her. And then late and then Layla, we like, I said, we talked about it before, but I mean, we get in the ring and we don't, of course we don't, we're, we're, we're athletes. You know what I'm saying? Professionals, but they have to be a, they have to be, you know, a big money. You know what I'm saying? We ain't gonna do it for peanuts, you know? Yeah, you're not gonna do it for nothing. No. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, no. Um, Mike says, like realistically, she lost her last three before the last fight. Yeah. She did. Facts. She definitely lost them. Um I don't even know what I don't I don't know what to say there <clears throat> um, other than totally unprofessional um, all the promoters out there that are watching Sonia drilling is very unprofessional and does not keep her word she doesn't she's not a woman of her word okay so you can't take her for word of mouth you probably can't even take her for a handshake. Not one of those people because uh, we were all good to go all week. Um, even this morning, all the way up until uh, the show started and she wasn't here. And I called and texted her and then she sent me an email response. So very unprofessional. Don't, don't, don't put her on the show. She's not worth your time. Um, women's boxing channel says Melissa Hernandez was the last fighter to beat McCarter in 2007 and Chevy drew with her. Chevy did draw with Melissa Hernandez, but like we were just talking, Chevy drew with Melissa Hernandez because Chevy didn't want to hurt Melissa. If anybody actually, the fight's on YouTube. If, if you want your own opinion. I mean, I love, I love Melissa to death too. So don't, don't think I'm putting down Melissa because like I just was talking, me and Melissa are cool. So it's not that, but from a fighter's perspective, been in there, done it, experienced it, know it. I know Chevy. She hurt her and could have finished her, but felt bad and didn't want to hurt her because they were friends. So she let, she put the brakes on like almost to the floor for the rest of the fight made it very entertaining to where she still felt she probably won the fight enough, 
I, have you still probably felt you won? Yeah. I, I, yeah. I still, still that, I, you know, okay. So she yeah. felt like she was doing enough to win, but without hurting her. So that's just, I don't, she didn't really, that wasn't really a draw. I don't think. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate that. Mike just um, message said, Chevy, you're a legend in women's boxing. I'm sorry you got robbed. She I'm is. Um, Chevelle is a six time world champion, right? Yeah. In, in how many, what, three weight classes now? I think, you know, and to be honest with you, <laughs> I always tell people five times, five times, five times. I actually went to the box record, I counted. And I was like, wait, it's, it's no, you six, six time. No, like that's or whatnot, but um, I can't remember the weights. I, mean, I think the, the lower weight that I've ever fought, I think it's like at 127, if I'm not mistaken. And 126 featherweight. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Women's Boxing Channel chimes in. You're both legends. Oh, thank you. I'm definitely not as much of a legend, legend as Chevelle. Yes, you are. Um, but I am definitely honored to be in the Hall of Fame. So that's, that's to me is like every boxer's true fighters, every <laughs> true fighter's dream is to make the Hall of Fame. So that's, that was like, you know, I could close that chapter of my life and feel like I, I actually left a mark in the sport. So that feels good. You actually do. Yes, I agree at WBC. Yeah, thank you, Mike and Women's Boxing Channel. Um, so you haven't heard back from the commission, though, since um, they're um, working. Last week, and they said that, um, you know, because of the holiday breaks, um, you had Christmas, you had New Year's, and then on top of that, they had snowstorms there yeah. in South Dakota. So what happens now is that it has been assigned to a commission. The fight itself has been assigned to a commission. And that commission will sit down and he'll view the fight. He'll view everything that I submitted, stating what um, I felt was wrong, uh, where they went wrong. I broke the fight down, fight by fight, to the tape, everything. So the commissioner, the head commissioner told me that she's waiting. Um, it has been assigned. So that commissioner, that one commissioner sits down and he watched you know, beautify. And then after that, if it's not overturned and I want to, you know, continue to pursue it, then they will have all the commissioners um, look at the film and then they see what all of them say. So okay. I'm just waiting for the one right now. Hopefully I should have something I'm hoping by the end of this week, um, no later than the middle of next week. We'll see what happens. Um, and we'll just go for it. So right now, right. I'm going to I mean, I, I hope that it gets overturned and they do the right thing. You see the robberies way, way too much in boxing period as a whole, but especially in women's boxing, um, it, it happens all the time. I think every one of us have felt it at one time or another, yeah. and it sucks. Um, and like Chevelle said, I mean, a good metaphor, Eve, she feels raped. I mean, because this is life to us like this is not just a fight like Sonia said it was just a fight no girl it is not just a fight this is a business this is serious this is our life our work our life's work like why don't you flip that around I mean imagine if you were Chevelle Hallback and you just lost to a nobody Thank by you. decision and got robbed how would you feel? Would you be affected? Of course you would, because you just got robbed to somebody who wasn't even on the same atmosphere as you. And that's on her record. It, yes, it, like, flip the script. I would, How would I would, you feel? I wouldn't take it as far as to saying that she's nobody. I won't take it that far. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we won't say a nobody, but somebody who was unheard of in the public but, eye but the before. It, but the thing about it, honestly, you know, regardless of what her rectum looks like, regardless of 
if she's on the same caliber or below me or whatever the case may be, at the end of the day, she got in that ring. She did. She said, you know, two fighters fought. Her, you know, yep. two fighters, you know, fought or whatnot. And I don't care who you are, how long you've been fighting your accolades. That doesn't matter to me. Like I said, win yep. is a win, lose is a lose. If you're going to beat me, then beat me. Decisively then beat me. Yeah. You know, don't, don't take it. Nothing away. Right. That's right. Nothing. And I agree. I mean, I... I have uh, mad respect for anybody that actually can get in the ring. I hate it when people come to you and they talk boxing and then they talk trash or whatever. And it's like, have you ever even sparred? Like, do you even know what it's like? You know, and those are usually the ones that talk the most. Like, they know what's going on. And they've never even stepped in a ring. So it's like, how are you over here talking when you don't even know what it's like? You've never even tried it. Like, you can't even, you probably couldn't go one round. Get out of my face with that. Um, yeah, I, but I do respect that. I mean, kudos, she got in there, so that's more than we can say for a lot of people that won't take the fight. But right. you rubbed me the wrong way when you didn't show up today, last minute. Um, I had really nothing bad to say about you prior to this. Um, I was gonna give you kudos for fighting Chevelle, um, and Literally talk about your whole career, what got you into boxing, who you looked up to, who you think the top fighter, like the, the best of all time females are. What's your goals in boxing? Uh, you know, how are you feeling taking the fight with Chevelle? Like the, there was no bad blood over here. And there was literally not going to be any bullshit from me to you other than I was going to tell you that it was a big controversy. Pretty much half or three quarters or all of the world felt like it was a robbery. I'm not the only one that felt that way. I'm sorry, little lady, but uh, no. So I was going to ask your side of the story and how you felt about the decision. Do you honestly feel you won? Would you give her a rematch? Do you know she's contesting the fight? I wasn't going to talk trash about you. I was going to put you on my platform and have the whole world hear your whole story about who you are and how you got into boxing and how this fight happened and how do you feel about the people saying it's a controversy? Do you feel like it was? That's literally what the show was going to be. But since you decided to... um not come here today. Now I have no respect for you at all. <laughs> Man, um, women's so boxing. So what, right? It's what? Almost 10. I'm supposed to be to work at 2. We don't see you, what happens. Are you working tonight? I'm supposed to be there at 2. We'll see what happens. <laughs> oh, 2 in the morning? Yeah. Okay. But so I hear not, huh? Okay. I just didn't. You got to get off soon. Yeah, because I, I have to I have to fix some something to eat. I haven't eaten on some. I haven't ate either, girl. So that's cool. Yeah, we can wrap it up. Um, let me just read these last questions. I think there's one to see. Um it's awesome to watch two of the old school right here. Thank you, women's boxing. We are definitely old school. I would say we're old school. Absolutely. Um, I wanna ask your opinions on the likes of Tierra Brown not getting fights yet certain fighters seem to get big big favors all the time tiara is 13 and 0 with nine ko's too lou yeah. debella has a dozen fighters in his stable yet most don't get out nowhere near enough in my opinion <clears throat> what do you think um, about brown it's, it's, it's politics it's blank period it's politics you know and unfortunately if you're yeah. not ready to have someone behind you um that can that has that money that can really invest and make things happen it's hard you have yeah. to grow and you have to struggle you that know? is so hard that, that that's the main problem i had coming up you know um i wanted to fight christy martin like that like, yeah that would have i don't know why that didn't ever happen you i wanted to see you fight christy martin i would have loved to have seen you fight ann wolf 
Me and Wolf, we wasn't in the same weight class. And yeah, she was heavier. Yeah, she was. I was but like, but I you was were a lot like, smaller like, then. I was like 130. She was like, yeah. like 147. And she 147. Was I guess it's just because I'm so used to you going up and down all the time. Like you fought up at 147. You've even fought at 154, haven't you? Yeah, so I fight at 154. Yeah, 154. So I guess it's because I see you go up and down all the time that I'm like, mm -hmm. man, I always wanted to see that fight because that would have been a good ass fight. I mean, I mean, I mean, and I actually really, really good friends as well. And I want Ann on the show. I'm going to have to talk to you. Like, I've been messaging Ann. So that's the thing. Like, I have so many people on my... I, right now, I have a long list of people that have already said they're going to come on the show. So everybody, I've got some really good people coming on the show. I'm going to have Chevelle on again, where I'm prepared to go over Chevelle's career. I was not prepared for that tonight because it was literally just supposed to be her coming in, talking about her contesting the fight. Did she want a rematch? Did Sonia want a rematch? Like, how did she feel about the decision? And then Chevelle was going to leave. She was literally just going to be a special pop in and pop out. In and out. It wasn't supposed to be the Chevelle show. So we're going to have Chevelle back on for the Chevelle show. Um, <laughs> where we can actually be prepared to talk about Chevelle with Chevelle. Um, and I can have all my questions laid out for her so everybody can really know Chevelle that Probably doesn't isn't anybody that doesn't know Chevelle in her career, but we'll we'll get into that with her another day. But I've got a long list of people, but there are several people that I'm friends with, like on Facebook or Instagram or whatever. But a lot of them don't answer their DMs because you can imagine how many they get. And I don't have people's phone numbers, so if they don't answer their DM, like I don't have any other way to contact them. So I might have to get with you after the show. I'm a, we can talk and um, maybe you can ask her if she would even be interested. I mean, you don't have to give me her info or anything, but you can ask her. And if she's interested, then you can give her my number or whatever. Yeah, I'll ask her. I would love to have her on, but yeah, I always want to see you two fight and Christy Martin. And that would have been a huge one. I always wanted to see uh, Martin and Riker fight too. I mean, I know it never or Riker and Ann Wolf. Yeah. They weren't in the same weight class either. No, but I'm just saying, like, you know, you think about like greats, like what would have happened if this great fought this great? Yeah. Like we true. only could wish. Yeah. And that's my that's 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 my buddy. I used to go to Waco and train with her and everything, you know, we sparred and everything. We had oh my god, when I tell you she is an awesome person. We had such a great time together. Oh my yeah. god. She's an awesome. Yeah, she's like, she to me, because um, I have her on Facebook and I all her posts just crack me up, like with, with her family and like, like yeah. stuff she's got going on. I don't want to put too much out there, but like stuff she's got personally going on. She reminds me of you. I've, I've always told everybody that ever talks to me when they ask me about you because they're like, oh my God, like Chevelle is so scary. <laughs> and I laugh. I literally I like I roll laughing, but it's because, you know, your fist of steel, Chevelle Hall, but, and you're like, but I'm, I'm like, listen to me, Chevelle might look mean, but I'm telling you, if you actually are friends with Chevelle and you actually really know Chevelle, she is like the biggest teddy bear, most sweetest wouldn't her like say anything off the way like the most genuine sincere loving person i've ever met in my entire life other than family I'm like sure. seriously and i tell everybody that i mean i don't know if you want people to know that or if you want them to think you're like this mean ass but no, I, I, really, I, really I always I tell really people like chevelle no chevelle is like she's a big teddy bear like she's so loving and like sincere and like just honest like you, like the best person ever like i tell everybody that and they're like no she's mean i'm like whatever just you gotta meet her like you gotta meet her at all oh yeah and mike i would love to come on your show just send me the information let me know man mike mm -hmm. she's coming back on my show before she goes on your show okay let's not make this a mike brook war Tierra Brown is oh, a great fighter. And women's her. boxing, um, 
Yeah, that me and Jane, we used to talk like on a regular basis, on a regular basis. And she started before I did. So I came up under up under her. I don't think that we, Oh for female Fridays. Yeah, I don't think we were like mm, she was much more ahead of me. Away Jane Couch. Yeah, for us to, you know, to ever fight each other and whatnot. Um but I think if she would have stayed in the game a little longer, you know, we probably would have got the opportunity to fight each other. But we talked on a regular basis. I got a lot of I got a lot of advice from her, you know. Um she was just like a mentor, honestly, to be honest. Yeah, she's she's a mentor to a lot of people. Yeah. Like she's very open too. She's one of those that will literally actually re like talk to you. It's funny because like I don't know about for probably not so much for you because you're so like well known like to everybody in boxing but like for me when I was fighting like it was hard for me to reach out to people and they actually respond or like give me their number or because like I don't know I wasn't I guess on that level yet um whereas you I mean you gave me your number with no problem there's very few people that are like that I guess in the sport um, there's several that have a lot of the girls I met at the inductions gave me their info. Um, so I've been in touch with several of them, but there's a lot of them that are, they just don't, or at least I didn't, I never got responses. Um, but there's several that are so, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Mike, you're talking about female Fridays. Yeah. That were the Friday where everybody comes on. Is that what you're talking about? But yeah, Chevy can come. I'll share shit. I'll share my Chevy with you. She can come <laughs> to your show too. That's what's up. That's what's up. Um, Shane, there was little footage of back then too. It was a lot of classes six years before. Women's boxing, three years, not six, sorry. Women's boxing channel love Jane. Yeah, I think everybody loves Shane. Uh, Michael, or I would have liked to see that as well against Jane Couch. Yeah. Michael, our only footage back then is home taped VHS of the fights. Yeah, yeah you have wasn't. Um, with um, Ryan, Ryan Witso. Ryan has almost every fight that you could probably think of on VHS. You know what? As a matter of fact, I got Ryan's number, and yeah. he probably does. There's a couple of my fights that I want that I can't. Find. I have. I actually taped every one of my fights, so I have them somewhere, but. A lot of my finding them is the problem. Especially um, when I was a student, Georgia, that's but I then who owns the VCR? You know what? Um, if if my husband didn't throw it out, I made him keep a VCR so that I could um, like transfer my VHSs over to DVDs or a disc drive. Hopefully, he didn't throw it away because like a lot of our old fights were on VHS. Yeah, I'm not do you even have any of your fights? Man, I had I, I I do. They're somewhere. But I've had I had much more. But um moving like going from Savannah back to Florida and other places. Yeah. That's the problem moving. Yeah. I know. I know. All right. Well, I know you want to eat. I, I promise everybody I'll have Chevelle back on the show for the Chevelle show soon. Um, I'll get with her and find out what date works for her and I'll have her right back on so we can actually have a Chevelle talk. Um, but thanks for coming in and staying all episode with me since um, old chicken girl didn't show up today. Uh, I hope the fight gets overturned. Uh, keep me posted, everybody. I will let you know when Chevelle gets some news. Um, on one of my episodes, I'll let you know when she gets an update on the overturning of the of the decision. And we'll yes, go. And thank you for having me, Brooke. Anything oh, yes, I appreciate you. And we will definitely get you back on here again. Yes, most definitely. All right. We will talk. I'll, talk. I'll give you a call later. All right. Okay, cool. All right. Thanks, Chevy. No problem. Okay, guys, um, let's see. Women's Boxing Channel says in Jane's book, she said about dodging Don King. Jane wasn't right marginally, and King stuck a tin of beans on the scale to make up. Yeah. Dusty Munch, the great show. Thank you, Dusty. I really hope um, everybody enjoyed it. Um, Gold Roger 10 says, nice. Women see you both. Loved it. I'm so glad you guys loved it. Let me tell you when 
I got the email when I tried to call Sonia when she wasn't here and I was talking to Eric before the show started. I was beside myself, y'all. I was, like, I think I explained it earlier. I don't know if you all were in here, but when, when I started reading, the, when I called and she didn't answer and then I texted her and she responded that she sent me an email, she wasn't coming and it was after the airtime. So we were late starting the show. I was already like getting heated. You know how when you get really upset and your body starts like your heart starts racing and your temperature starts rising and you can tell you're like red like an apple and then you're about to explode because you're so mad you like start shaking. That's where I was. I'm sure Eric could come on here and contest that I was a little beside myself for a minute there because I had to gather myself before we started the show. But then when I read the email and she told me to mind my own business and that I was jealous of her. No mercy came out. We talked about flipping the switch. The other side of me, this person back here on the wall came out for a minute. And it, um, let's just say that it's probably a good thing. It wasn't a face to face interview because, uh, I was really, really pissed off to be honest with you. Um, and once again, let's just say, um, Sonia, you are a chicken. I can't believe you did that. It's totally unprofessional. I was going to be extremely nice. Talk you up, give you some spotlight. No, you lost all my respect. Um, and I will not have anything good to say about you from now on. I truly, truly hope, um, that the fight gets overturned and you get the loss that you deserve. I'm not the only person that felt that way, but I'm not the type of person that was going to totally like just have you on the show to just talk shit to you the entire show. That's not what it was going to be about. I literally have five pages of stuff I wrote out that I was going to talk to you about. It was going to be all about you up until the last like 10 minutes of the show. We were going to have Chevelle pop in and talk about a possible rematch and the, and her um, contesting the decision. And did you really feel like you won? Which clearly by being a chicken and not showing up, the whole world now knows that you know you lost and got your ass whooped. Plain and simple. If you want to reach back out, I'll have you on some other time if you want to come on. Um, but it won't be a good episode for you. Uh, but let's just say I have no respect for you anymore. Um, but everybody that tuned in, um, Golden Roger 10, Dusty, Women's Boxing Channel, Mike, um, I hope I didn't miss anybody. I really appreciate you all tuning in. I was telling Eric before the show, I was really nervous today because this was my first show by myself without Mike on, like we had last week, you know, my season premiere last week, Mike was on here with me. Um, but I was super nervous. I had literally all my notes. Like I was, I was prepared. Um, and when she didn't show up, I lost my, I lost my shit for a minute there. I, I had to collect myself for a few moments before I got on. But everybody, um, I want to thank you guys for joining me on No Punches Pulled with No Mercy, my platform. Um, it is talk the talk and walk the walk. We did not have anybody walk the walk today because they chickened out. But hopefully next week uh, we will have another exciting show for you. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share my page. Um, tell all your friends. Bring them all next week if you enjoy the show. I'd love to have as many people in here as possible to talk to. Um, it's always good to interact and talk with you guys and have all your questions. It makes it fun and exciting for me um, to be able to have all your expertise chiming in with me. Um, also, there is now a donate button below. So if you guys enjoyed the show um, and you're feeling generous and you want to support me and my show, hit the subscribe button. It'd be greatly appreciated. Um, also, you can follow me here um, as well as on, I am on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Um, I have two pages on all my social media platforms. There's a Brooke, No Mercy, Deardorff, hashtag Millbrook page, um, as well as a No Punches Pulled with No Mercy page. Please go follow me on Facebook, um, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok to stay up with what's going on in my life and the podcast. 
Um, and, you know, I want to thank you guys for tuning in with me. Um, I mean, we'll be here next week. Same time, same place. 8.30 Eastern Standard Time next Tuesday with another special guest. Um, so keep your eye out so you can find out what's going on next Tuesday. And I hope all of you will join me again then. Until then, remember, punch hard. Nothing else matters. See you next week.